Hello and welcome to Access Chat. I'm delighted to welcome Aaron Smith to the chat today. Uh, I think I've known Aaron since the early Cretaceous period. Um, we've both been working in the, the, the area of dyslexia for a very long time. Not that we're dinosaurs, really. Um, so, Aaron, welcome. Um, and I know that you're doing something pretty special later on in the year. You're putting together the, the first dedicated uh, dyslexia conference. Can you tell us about that and how this came about? So it's the Dyslexia Show and it's going to be at the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham in March 2020, so the 20th and 21st of March. And it's coming about mainly because of my dyslexia. So being a 35 year old severely dyslexic adult who has worked in the dyslexia field for over 15 years, um, I've seen in the UK that we have a, a, some really good presence of dyslexia for supporting parents and supporting teachers. And and it kind of like started, that's how it started, kind of me within the field looking at that actually there's loads of regional work, there's loads of local work going really well, but you weren't getting that national presence. There was events going on like, like conferences and basically that parents weren't really going to them. But then last year, we kind of had a number of events. We had events in Leeds. We had a couple of events in London that kind of started bringing larger numbers. So like like the 500s, the 1,000 people kind of registering. And and that kind of got me thinking, waiting, and said that actually my idea that I, I've had for about three years kind of came out and went, you know, what, actually, this should work. We should do this. Um, started the process, started looking for someone to help me fund it, which was the thing when you go to the NEC, that's always going to be a small issue. Um, and then uh, a group of people came up and went, yeah, we'll fund it. We expanded it from being just parents and educators to being parents, educators in the workplace. So we're now got, uh, we've now got a workplace section, which is going to be really good. And it's just like we kind of launched our, our Facebook campaign about a week ago and, and like over 600 people we, we've had like like about 500 shares it's been like it's just it's a bit of a bonkers time it is it's like we we're like we, we're now worrying that we're going to not have the space for the delegates that's our issue just because you have a you've got all these pe bits of paper like your fire regulations and stuff like that we have to deal with but i think the biggest thing is that that we want to support as many people as possible we're, we're getting some positive feedback and we've had some negative feedback which was actually really helpful yeah, it's because... Do you see this event as something that can, you know, that can be attractive for people from outside UK, let's say, you know, south of Europe, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. where I'm now? Because I feel that, for example, you know, if I go to the school where my girl is and talk about, you know, assistive technology and dyslexia, the professor is going to say, what? You know, they're, they're not going to be, they're going to be somehow scared. Uh, yeah, first, no, that... they don't have much support. But they, and at the same time, they don't really have a place where they can go and talk with their peer teachers uh, to to get that type of conversation. So uh, what's? Yeah. I think I think you're right there. I think that actually that that we will. The the plan is that we won't be doing this for well, we're we'll doing this for one year. We will be. It is. So yeah, we're just waving at your 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 uh, your daughter, of course, uh, uh, and uh, we'll have uh, um, we'll have it for one. We'll do it for the. We're not. It's not just for one year. It's the idea is that we grow for multiple years. We do, uh, and I think that actually after the first year, we'll probably see more people internationally come in, uh, and that would be really good. I think that's for me. It's kind of like it's. It's all about supporting as many people as possible and having no, there's no kind of agenda, best way, the best way to describe it is. It's like we're having anyone and everyone there. And that's the thing, it's, it's, especially when you go to an, a large exhibition centre, they like to kind of specify it as a trade show or as, an, as a consumer show. And it's both. It's an anyone and everyone show, but it's got trade elements and it's got consumer elements because it is open for parents, it's open for teachers, which would be classed as a trade show. And I, it's just, I, it's, for me, it is all about, let's change perception. Let's make sure, we, the UK has had good times with dyslexia, we've had bad times with dyslexia, we're not at the best place. We know that, that young people aren't being supported, we know that, that parents still don't know about assistive technology, parents don't even know that they can use a reading ruler in, in a, in a classroom and that's the thing is educating parents and educating teachers and and the workplace that actually dyslexics have amazing skills yes 
Anyone else want to ask me? Go on, ask yeah, me a question. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I was just, uh, one of my skills was not with the microphone. Um, you know, I managed to mute myself. So I, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, we, we definitely do have something to give uh in both you know con contributing to society the workplace and everything else and i think that you know, as someone that was diagnosed later in life i went through education and found some of it tough and i can definitely say there are a lot of people like me that wouldn't have wouldn't have got as far without the help that we had in later life. I wouldn't have done my, my second degree without assistive tech, without um, mm. the help I had. But it needs to start much earlier. And that's why you need yeah. to be doing the awareness raising in schools, because even even the SENCOs, uh, Special Educational Needs Coordinators, Deborah, um, this UK acronym, is it, they aren't necessarily familiar with the assistive tech. So you've got all these teachers that are aware of the the condition, you know, have some awareness of the condition. They're trying to help out, but they don't necessarily know about the technologies and how to apply them and all this kind of stuff. So there are great people out there. I think hopefully they'll be coming and convening at Aaron's show. Um, we, can and we can hope. We can hope. We can hope. Um, and and we can we can also I think you know talk about the the challenges and and also the benefits in in the workplace because actually the working environment's challenging too and even just getting into the working environment can be a challenge it, less so now I yeah think. I, I i definitely agree with you there i think it's getting better i think that larger companies are understanding and seeing that actually that dyslexia is a strength and that's definitely Definitely evidence from what from the kind of you, 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 I can see the delegates coming in and kind of seeing kind of the demographic and we're having a lot of public sector workers are, are registering to come. We're having some there is some larger names requesting for more information, which for me was was really beneficial. But I think that actually you know one of the, one of the things that you were talking about earlier about your diagnosis and that that's a big question within the UK. It is that, and I think that this is the hardest thing. That actually, that doesn't matter where you are, where you go from. When it comes to, uh, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in a school. It, every local authority is different when it comes to diagnosing dyslexia, and because di uh, dyslexia is very much a an education difference or problem, I think the UK find it very difficult. I think when, when we talk about autism or, or ASD. Uh, or even ADHD, because there is more of a, me a medical kind of element on that in the UK. Definitely, it's kind of the NHS can take more of a role. And when when we look at dyslexia, very much an education problem. And I think that actually we we know there's what 40% of the UK prison population have a literacy difficulty. Between 40 and 50 percent it is. But we also know that 40% of entrepreneurs are dyslexic because they're using that superpower, that skill, them skills they've got to do it. And I think that's the thing. But actually understanding that actually technology is there, understanding that actually that is it diagnosis, is it screening, is it is it just a checklist we need to know? Do we just need to know that information? And that's the whole point of the show. The show was always to have to basically inform people, give people an, an informed choice. That's why there's that there's we've got two bookshops. We've got multiple companies that sell assistive tech going. We've got we've got uh, um, we've got people that want to do aromatherapy because that's completely different. It is. I would have never thought of an aromatherapy company coming to the show, but they, these are people that are, have started that interest in, in exhibiting at the show, and that, and that's the biggest thing. It is an it's an, it's an exhibition at its core, uh, and it's really beneficial. But I think that workplace is kind of like the really interesting area for me as well. Yeah. Uh, just coming back on the thing that um, I was saying about applic application, the fact technology has made it easier to apply for jobs, right? Because I uh, yeah, I remember applying for jobs when